Welcome back to episode seven of Address the Yes, where you guys ask in the comments some detailed questions that need thorough answers. Like this first question, for example, can I overclock my BIOS chip? Uh, the answer to that is you can do anything if you set your mind to it. But it's been a while, so let's overclock this episode of Address the Yes. Welcome back guys, in the first series we question we have here is if the rumors are true about the Ryzen 2 series and its spectacular price to performance ratio, how do you think that will affect the used market? Even their lowest end $100 CPU should be four cores at a decent overclockable speed from the looks of it. And that does beat out a lot of used price performance, especially due to the cheap AM4 motherboards. I think prices will drop across the board, especially when they start. So that's in relation to the 3000, Ryzen 3000 chips that are coming out later this year. I honestly think, of course, anything new that comes out that brings better price performance than the previous generations is going to bring down used price performance accordingly. Uh, of course, when it comes to just me in general and hunting deals, that's really not gonna change a lot because I'm always looking for that cream of the crop stuff. But when it comes to sort of maybe like bringing down the prices of fourth gen Intels and also bringing the price down of second gen Ryzen, of course it's going to do that. To what extent though, I'm not too sure because one thing we have seen with trends and you've always got to look at the trend in the used market and the new market. One thing we have been seeing with the new market is those $100 CPUs now because I remember a couple of years ago we had things like the uh, Pentium G, I think it was G4560 or something like that and it was two cores, four threads and that was like 50 or 60 dollars and that really shook up the market at the time and that was a new processor came with a cooler and it was just phenomenal value for money now you're seeing like a minimum threshold on the market of a hundred dollars and for a four core and so that's kind of a trend that's coming in are they going to release the 3000 series chips and are they going to charge a little bit more in relation to the second gen chips that does remain to be seen i mean I'm curious because, you know, you look at the 8100 as well on the Intel side of things, and that's sort of upped to like $118 now for that entry level CPU. So I am curious, but of course, new price performance will always bring the price down of used price performance. Next up here, Spectra asks, I hope that we will see X58 content because I just bought one Gigabyte X58 UD7 and bought because I love the old school overclocking and you inspired me a lot through your videos. I'm sure that there is going to be a fix for the performance loss in Windows 10. I got that X58 board for 100 US dollars with an X5650, i7, 920, and 10 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, that's a pretty good deal, like really good pickup there. Um, I, in terms of X58 content, we did a heap of X58 content recently. I did Darth Jar Jar as well, looked at the performance of the dual X58 Xeons, did X79 as well. I'll look at them probably a little bit later in the year. Um, with maybe some builds in the meantime, like we'll definitely keep touching on the old X58 and X79 because there is some questions later on in this episode that do relate to X58 too. But in terms of the content, that's not going anywhere in relation to one of my favorite architectures. Well, actually X58 is pretty much my favorite architecture of all time because of what it can do and sort of what it had in relation to those Xeons that came out that were sort of kept real low key, but offer phenomenal price performance. Next up, hashtag address the yes. Hey Brian, do you think it would be worth it to upgrade from a Core i7 5820K at 4.4 gigahertz to one of the new Ryzen chips, assuming the rumors are true, for mostly gaming and some editing and rendering occasionally? I have a 1080 Ti Water Force GPU and do notice in a few games that I play that my CPU is the bottleneck. Keep up the great videos. Um, I would say in relation to the 5820K, I'd say, are you playing at 1080p because that's realistically the only resolution that that CPU should be bottlenecking the uh, 1080 Ti. I mean, 1080 Ti is a beast of a GPU still to this day, and a 5820K at 4.4 gigahertz will still play games really well. I'd say it would play games just as well as a Ryzen 5 2600 at like four gigahertz off the top of my head. So you're not really gonna get any benefits for gaming upgrading to Ryzen the second gen, but the third gen, um, if the, of course, if the rumors are true, if that thing can go to five gigahertz, um, then upgrading will be worthwhile, but it does remain to be seen because I, like I said in my original video, I got the feeling that these will kind of go from 4.4 to 4.6 gigahertz. That's my thinking of where these uh, chips will overclock to. 
Remains to be seen, everyone's got their guesses in the works. And if that's the case, you're not gonna get a whole lot of benefit out of it. I don't really know, and I don't think anyone out there has access to these Ryzen 3000 chips, except the engineers and the people stress testing them themselves. And they are very, and trust me when I say this, they are very tight-lipped about what they're leaking. I know AMD over the last year have been really trying to crack down on rumors and leaks. They absolutely hate it. So what we're seeing from AMD is really all you're gonna see. Uh, of course, right up until launch, I mean like a week before launch, once some, they get out in the retail channels, that's when you see those real leaks because people just take them and test them. Uh, so I am waiting for those details, but a few months beforehand, it's still, no one knows. Next up here, Matt Stone says, according to the YouTuber Dank Memes, you can overclock the W3680 and W3690 on OEM motherboards using Intel's extreme tuning utility. And that's, he means like Dell's, HP, Lenovo's, and other manufacturers like that that did make X58, uh, mainly like workstation systems. Uh, granted, he was only able to achieve 4.1 gigahertz, but that is still a noteworthy bump. I wish you would be trying this soon. I actually only read this comment like, even though it was two months ago, I only read it now. I'll definitely look into that if I come across uh, one of these motherboards because I have come across one of them in the past. I just don't know if it supported the six core Xeons, but basically the W3680 is the uh, single QPI score Xeons that can work on some of those X58 boards that don't support the QPI2 Xeons. That's the X5650s and whatnot. Uh, and they do on the same token have an unlocked multiplier. That's the 3680 and the 3690. So they're able to just go sky high. So in the cases of these OEM boards, they're probably locked at the base clock. Anyway, we'll be taking a look at that. I do look forward to that. Next up here, we've got Keeler. He says, when you get an X79 system for 15 bucks from an e-waste center and you end up, oh, man, look, Keeler, I feel, man, it, that would have been like the biggest peak and then the biggest come down after that. I, I really feel sorry for you, dude. And then next up, Tricks Gaming, he says, if you are using Photoshop, don't bother with MS Paint and use Control Shift Alt S, which is the save for web function. There you can specifically uh, edit the quality and size of your PNG JPEG GIF without the output of the image. Thanks for the tip. Uh, he's talking about when I, sometimes the images are way too big, so I run them through uh, MS Paint first, which reduces the size drastically. Then I can use them for things like thumbnails, where YouTube has a two megabyte limit on the size of your thumbnails. So. It's a little handy trick, I'll definitely use that. Uh, next up, Brian G. Uh, Mendoza says, uh, aloe vera will help with the scar tissue. Try to get some fresh aloe and use as a cream. Uh, I've been massaging it a lot. I've been using a bit of uh, vitamin E and jojoba oil on that. And it's just, it's coming good. It's a slow progress because it was a deep scar. It's actually really crazy because the back of my nail here has a indent mark. So that's how deep the cut went in my thumb. And it's actually funny because there was another comment in a recent video that the poor guy, I mean, Lucas uh, Kolka, he said, lol, Brian, I did not learn from your mistakes and cut my finger on the thin PCIe bracket thing. I, I, it's painful, man. I feel sorry for you, Lucas. Hope you get well soon. Uh, and next up, we've got here, Mr. 11SE111. Um, he's actually, I do remember this guy's name from like 2014, 2015. He's been commenting for a long time. And he says, it seems that this channel are one of those who don't believe into craps from adored TV's leaks about cheap Ryzen 3000 CPUs. Um, in relation to the Ryzen 3000 CPUs and adored TV's leaks, uh, adored TV's entitled to have whatever opinion he's allowed to have. He's entitled to make whatever content he's allowed to have. Uh, and I like Jim, he's a really nice guy. And I think some of his videos are phenomenal, they're fantastic, they're well researched, they're well put together, and he delivers them really well. It's just on the leaks with Ryzen, I had a different opinion, and that's because I get into the mindset of those people on the board who are sitting down and they're thinking about making money, because AMD, Intel, Nvidia, they're all publicly listed companies. At the end of the day, they got shareholders and major institutional investors that they gotta take care of, and so they're thinking profits. And so when I look at what they're gonna offer the public, and the prices that I saw on those videos, I disagreed with it. I think they're gonna charge more if those rumors are true about the specs, or I think they're gonna be a little bit less on the specs at the same price. That's just my thinking. It all remains to be seen. Um, I just look at it logically from how much they wanna make in terms of money. And uh, yeah, but as, in terms of Jiminy's content, it, it's good. I, like, I really liked his analysis of the 1660 Ti. So um, yeah, 
Next up, JFKO says, question to the S-Men, when are you going to convince Galax to sell GPUs in Europe? Uh, they actually do already under a different brand name. It's called KFA2. That is actually officially Galax. It's just they couldn't call their company Galax in Europe because I'm guessing someone already took the rights to that name. Uh, and another example of this is in Japan with Logitech. They actually have to call their company Logicool because in Japan, someone already took the name Logitech before them. So it's a weird thing. So it's, it is already in Europe and it's called KFA2. Next up, Joseph Canister says, uh, please notify me when you get hands on like a bunch of 2070 GPUs. I'm here in TX or Texas and when Doom External comes out, yeah, sure, I got the Ryzen 1600 and RX 484 gigabyte, but I'm not sure that's gonna take this game okay. Uh, I mean, R RTX 2070s, they actually have been in the US coming up secondhand a little bit. Uh, in Australia, I've only seen one up for sale secondhand. It was pretty close to retail, so. I didn't really bother, um, but yeah, I, I don't have any secondhand RTX 2070s that I'm, I'm getting in bulk. I mean, they're at the moment, like RX 570s, RX 470s, the GTX 10 series cards, the miners are still getting rid of those things and you can get them in bulk for pretty good prices. I'd maybe suggest taking a look for a 1080 Ti. That thing's still a beast before I will trade blows with the 2070. Next up, Muab Dib says, don't buy DAC and amps, buy audio interfaces if you want true clean audio like focus rights, RMEs, etc. Most DACs and hi-fi trash is not outputting music cleanly. It depends on what DAC and amp you're buying. Essentially, a DAC and amp is not getting the input side of things, so technically it should be better value for money if all you want to do is listen to high-quality audio. Um, there's many DAC and amps that I really like. There's the O2 DAC amp solution. That's pretty much flat and neutral. Uh, it's very high-powered too, so they're not trash. Uh, it's just different strokes for different uh, folks. Next up, Tech with Sean says, I love that you address some of the troll comments. That's what makes you rock. You've always got to, you've got to feed them a little bit sometimes, man. Otherwise, they're not going to comment anymore and that's not fun. Next up, Natal Babel says, did you dye your hair? I have dyed my hair and I do continue to dye my hair because I, um, I don't want to fall into that uh, tech tuber frosted look. Next up, VS Kai says, regarding the scar tissue, a bench grinding wheel should take care of it. Wink face, good video, thanks. Yeah, man, I'll just get some steel wool and turpentine on that thing, clean it right up. Next up, Joel Queen says, uh, love the new set. It'd be great if you did a LAN party. I bet it would make from a great vid. Uh, yeah, I'd love to set up like a LAN party locally. It's just, there's so much going on here at the moment. It's ridiculous. Um, people just want to keep sending stuff in, whether it's used, new, and they want me to take a look at it. And I'm like, man, I can't refuse that. So it's been busy at the moment. One day when I'm not so busy, I will want to set up a lovely, awesome LAN party. You guys will have to let us know too. What are the games in 2019 that are new, but you can still play the LAN functionality on? Like a lot of these games nowadays are just locked to the internet. And that was one thing I missed back in the day when you played over LAN, it was like the, the pings were zero, basically. It was like instantaneous. So it was such a good experience. And then the last question here is from Frag a lot. He says, I love to add M.2 NVMe on my Asus P9X79 motherboard, not Pro, not Deluxe. I just need one of those X2 PCIe cards with an M.2 connector on it, right? Uh, yeah, you can get the uh, PCIe adapters that'll go then through your PCI Express, whether it be 16 lane or whatever it is. Uh, and of course you may need a modded BIOS. So in the case of the Rampage I have here, Someone made a modded BIOS for it and it worked perfectly. Uh, there is another guide that I haven't tried yet where a guy's in Windows and he sets all these things up and then is able to get um, the NVMEs working on via another method. Um, but other than that, I haven't tried that yet, so I can't validate if it works or not. Anyway, guys, that's it for this episode of Address the Yes. If you guys have any questions that are boggling your mind, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. Also, if you've got a joke, always love hearing a good joke, good troll, I'll go with that too. And that's about it. I'll catch you guys in another one very soon. If you enjoy the content, as always, be sure to hit that sub button, bell notification. A city where it's always popping with those behind the scenes shots and stories. And I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.